This is going to be the best news that you're going to hear in regards to life expectancy, longevity, at least today, if not this year. We used to flat out think that as you would get older, each time you would try to make a change towards improving your life expectancy, it was kind of a moot point. Like if you were in your 50s or 60s and you stopped drinking or you stopped smoking, it wouldn't have that much of an impact because quote unquote, the damage is done. That was really heavy science. Like that was pretty strict. We looked at that from the muscle perspective. They looked at that from exercise, from smoking, and the literature just was like, yeah. The bottom line is research has gotten stronger, algorithms have gotten better, statistical analysis has gotten better, and we've seen that you can teach an old dog new tricks and you can add years to your life by making changes even when you're older. Let's start with the smoking study. Then we're gonna talk about exercise, then we're gonna talk about building muscle. New England Journal of Medicine, 201,000 people. They took a look at people that never ever smoked, and then they looked at people that quit smoking between the ages of 25 and 34, that quit smoking between 35 and 44, and that quit smoking between 45 and 54. The difference between the years that they added to their lives was actually not much. The difference between people that quit smoking 25 to 34 and 35 to 44, it's only a one year difference. 10 years added to the life of people in their 20s and 30s, nine years added to people that quit in their 30s or 40s. Now, when you got into 45 to 54, it was a six year increase. But I mean, you gotta factor in, yeah, you've got a lot more years of cumulative damage, right? So your risk goes up of lung cancer and whatnot, right? So like it makes a lot of sense but way better than what we used to think. We used to think that if you quit smoking in your 50s, you, like you might as well not even do it because that's why so many people continue. They're like, the damage is already done. No, you can quit, but a lot of people don't smoke anymore. So let's talk physical activity for a second. Okay, this is the really big one. We used to think that if you were sedentary all your life and you started exercising in your 50s or 60s, you wouldn't really do that much benefit because again, the metabolic damage is done. Part of that is true. You can do a lot of good by pushing it hard and getting your mitochondria strong in your 20s and 30s and even your 40s. You have more leverage to make an impact then. But what matters most, and we're now seeing in this literature, is how much you change from your baseline over a set period of time. What I'm referring to is, in this case, your daily physical activity energy expenditure. How much you average you burn per day. So this was a big study published in the British Medical Journal. They found that your daily expenditure was very clearly correlated or inversely correlated with your all-cause mortality. The more you moved, the less likely to die, okay? And what they found in numbers is that for every one kilojoule per kilogram per day per year increase, there was a 24% reduction in your risk of dying. What on earth do those numbers mean? Let me put it into basic like example for you. Those numbers round out to about increasing your activity level from zero. So if you're doing zero right now, and in five years from now, you're doing about 20 minutes of exercise per day, that would be that same increase. So basically in five years, if you could be doing 20 minutes more exercise per day than you are now, you can basically lower your risk of dying 24% at any age, whether you're 20 or whether you're 70. So if you plan to be alive for at least the next five years, you can increase your activity from your baseline now. Now, the one place where it might be a little weird is if you're someone that's already doing 50 minutes of exercise per day, then extra exercise might be pushing you over. You can teach an old dog new tricks and it continues on. Dr. Peter Atia came on my channel and one of the things that he said that was really the most powerful thing is that as we get older, protein requirements increase. And that's where we've had it wrong for so long. We used to think, oh, our ability to utilize protein goes down, so maybe we're risking it by taking in too much, maybe it's hard on the body, so yeah, reduce your protein intake. And you look, if you look at the data, you see that people that are older consume less protein. Do they do it because they just eat less? Do they do it because it's harder to digest? Do they do it because they've been told to? Does it just happen naturally? Well, it turns out that by adding more protein as you get older, you actually improve 
your life expectancy. You improve, more importantly, your health span. So Peter Atias suggests starting to increase like 1.2 to 1.5x of what you're currently doing if you're over the age of 50. He's suggesting, hey, have more protein. And when you look at the literature and Gabrielle Lyon's work and all this, hey, it makes sense. We need to increase our muscle. One thing that you can simply do, you don't need to eat a bunch more food, add a protein shake per day. Is it that hard? Like one protein shake per day, if someone is over like 40, above what you're already doing, could be the difference, potentially, hypothetically, for you playing with your grandkids when you're 70 or 80 and not. You might still be alive, but you might not be moving very well. One protein shake per day. Granted, I'd love to see you eat burgers, I'd love to see you eat venison and good stuff, but everyone can add a protein shake. For the record, I put one that I use down below, it's called Bomar Nutrition, and the reason I like them is because it's sweetened with allulose, so you're losing like a stevia monk fruit allulose. The flavors are, I kid you not, the literal best tasting protein shakes I've ever had in my life. Like strawberry milkshake, they have a bananas and cream, they have a cookies and cream, and they have all these amazing flavors, and they're rolling out even more. Like their flavor profile, their list of different flavors they have is insane. You make that with like a little raw milk. I'm not even exaggerating, it tastes like a dang milkshake. So it's the hands down best protein shakes I have ever had in my life. So that link down below gets you a special discount as well because they've been a sponsor on this channel for a number of years. So that link, again, top line of the description underneath this video, no matter what age you are, whether it's after a workout, whether it's for breakfast, whether you mix it into yogurt, they have protein you can mix into coffee, they've got it all and it just makes sense. So check them out after this video, underneath this video. Now the interesting thing is, is we used to think that you could not change mitochondrial health as well. We used to think that the mitochondria would get damaged earlier in life, and then it would be really hard to sort of reverse that. There is a lot of literature that is now suggesting that doing things that increase mitochondrial biogenesis, like improving your cardiovascular endurance, improving uh, your VO2 max, the occasional caloric restriction or fasting, the occasional low carb diet where you actually condition the mitochondria to be a little bit stronger. These kinds of things have a huge impact because what they do is they trigger mitochondrial biogenesis. So I want you to think of something. You have these mitochondria. They are what take energy from the food that we eat and package it up into energy molecules that we can use to move our body. Okay. So if we start to lose these mitochondria or they become dysfunctional as we age, well, that's a big, big problem, right? Because then we lose our strength, therefore we lose our muscle, we lose our stamina, we lose our brain, we lose all of this, right? So what can we do to correct this? One of the most powerful things that you can do is eat occasionally in a caloric deficit, occasionally fast, or occasionally go low carb. You don't have to do it all the time. But the reason that this does this in such a beneficial way is it turns down sort of this switch in your body. It's like a dimmer switch. And when that dimmer switch gets turned all the way down, the mitochondria is like somewhat starving, right? So what it does is it says, okay, I need to consolidate and take components from other mitochondria and go through what's called fission and actually try to create a stronger mitochondria. It's better to have one strong mitochondria than two dysfunctional mitochondria, so this fission takes place. And then once that can happen, then the healthy diet and the exercise causes that healthy mitochondria that has been formed to reproduce. I mean, that's very colloquial and scientifically inaccurate to say, but for the colloquial version of this video, that's it. So mitochondrial biogenesis, you're increasing more mitochondria per square inch of your muscle. But now you're producing more healthy mitochondria. We used to think that this wasn't really doable when you get older because we thought the DNA damage occurred, the mitochondrial damage already happened, but we didn't realize that mitochondrial biogenesis and all of this can still occur even at an older age. So when you do all of these things together, it really creates this perfect storm. So before we used to say, hey, you're kind of SOL if you're 40 and you weren't doing this stuff. Like where was the benefit to looking at longevity research when you're in your 40s or 50s if it's just gonna make you bummed out about what you didn't do? Like it's like just reading something, it just makes you depressed. Otherwise, you're just basically sitting there being like, I wish I did that. You hear of all these people that actually reverse 
their epigenetic age. So you have your chronological age, like how old you actually are, and then you have your biological age, like if you were to put a number. So if you're 70 years old, but inside you're actually like a 40 year old, there is an epigenetic age. And now through different studies and ways of looking at things, we can analyze this. It turns out that a lower carb Mediterranean diet actually reverses epigenetic age. So even if you're 60, doing like a lower carb or even a, a moderate carb Mediterranean diet with appropriate activity can actually turn back the biological age. So that might be the first step. Resistance training along with a dietary change, and then we can start making all these other shifts, right? But the bottom line is focusing on the lifestyle factors first. Don't lean into your genetics, lean into what you can change. I'll see you tomorrow.